Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about the measurement of VSWR. VSWR standing for voltage standing wave ratio. VSWR stands for voltage standing wave ratio. So, what do you mean by VSWR? Let us see first. Later, I will tell you how to measure this VSWR. So, VSWR, its full form is voltage standing wave voltage standing wave ratio voltage standing wave ratio what do you mean by voltage standing wave what do you mean by standing wave what do you mean by standing wave uh, suppose if you are taking any transmission line this transmission line is ending with a load okay this load is having the impedance as ZL and this transmission line is having the characteristic impedance as Z0. Okay, so every transmission line must have a load or any other device that is connected which is acting as a load for this one. Okay, now whatever the signal that has been traveling in this transmission line that has to be passing through this load. Okay, when it touches this load, if the impedance of this characteristic impedance of the transmission line is equal to the impedance of the load equal, that means if Z0 is equal to ZL, then the signal will be absorbed by this ZL. Okay, there is no, there is no reflection. Okay, the signal will be absorbed by the Z, uh, load means there is no reflection the signal will, bar, will not reflect back suppose if z0 is not equal to zl z0 not is equal to zl what do you mean by that if the characteristic impedance is different and this load impedance is different both are different then what happens the signal will be reflected back A reflection is there reflection is there okay that means the signal which is going in the forward direction that will be reflected back in the transmission line okay this is what the standing wave this is the meaning of standing wave so standing wave is nothing but superimposition of transmitted signal and as well as the reflected signal superimpose of transmitted wave and as well as the reflected signal when it occurs it occurs when the characteristic impedance is not equal to the load impedance okay this is what the standing wave ratio this is what the standing view so we are calculating what is the maximum amplitude and what is the minimum amplitude of this signal what is the maximum amplitude and what is the minimum amplitude of this signal so that that ratio is nothing but voltage standing wave ratio so voltage standing wave ratio vswr vswr indicated by s which is represented by this s is equal to v max divided by v min this is what the meaning of voltage standing wave ratio so we are taking the maximum and minimum values of the standing wave as a ratio that can be expressed as 1 by rho 1 plus rho by 1 minus rho 1 plus rho by 1 minus rho what do you mean by rho where rho is equal to reflection coefficient rho is nothing but reflection coefficient reflection coefficient that is equal to p reflected p reflected divided by p incident p reflected by p incident that means the power reflected divided by power incident power reflected divided by power incident okay this is what the meaning of this voltage standing wave ratio and its expression s is equal to v max minus v v max by v min that is equal to 1 plus rho by 1 minus rho where rho is nothing but reflection coefficient now there are two different types of measurements of the vswr two measurements of Two measurements of VSWR available. Two measurements are there. 
one is VSWR which is nothing but yes less than 10 value that is low VSWR that is nothing but low voltage standing wave ratio and the second measurement will be VSWR S is equal to S is greater than 10 this is known as high voltage standing wave ratio high VSWR okay these are the two measurements generally we go for the measurement of VSWR need to be considered one is when the standing wave ratio S is less than 10 and the standing wave ratio S is greater than 10 so now let us see how the measurement of the VSWR can be done for S less than 10 so measurement of measurement of low VSWR that is S less than 10 measurement of low VSWR okay so the measurement of low VSWR can be done by adjusting the attenuator to get the reading on a DC milli voltmeter which is a VSWR meter generally VSWR meter we are using as a meter that is used to measure the voltage standing wave ratio okay that meter is having uh, any VSWR is having two types of measurements one is power measurement and another one is the standing wave ratio measurement so that VSWR meter in that meter we are going to see the reading of standing wave ratio for this measurement okay so what we are doing we are having a slotted section carriage we are having a slotted section carriage this slotted section carriage is having some sensor that is being inserted into it okay so it is an adjustable sensor where it can move here and move uh, go uh, forward and backward at the end we are connecting a match load at the end we are connecting a match load now this needle needs to be moved in the one direction in one direction until you get the maximum reflection in the voltage standing wave ratio meter okay so what we are doing we are terminating the match we are terminating the bench setup with a match load thereby we start rotating the slotted section carriage chonable probe until you find a maximum deflection in the reading okay so i will write here mm, connect a match load at the end of bench setup bench setup later rotate or move the chewable probe chewable probe towards towards source chewable probe towards source okay what happens when we rotate this one until we find maximum deflection in the VSWR meter okay so the, at that point we need to stop the rotation stop moving this is slotted section carriage and note down the standing wave ratio which is less than 10 which is less than 10 so then we will be having s is equal to some value this is what the uh, oldest standing wave ratio for the measurement of s less than 10 this is the arrangement so microwave source attenuator followed by slotted section carriage now i told you as i told you slotted section carriage needs to be terminated with the uh, match load are also known as shorter termination so this is the probe where we are connecting a chewable probe and the through which we are having crystal detector and then we will be having the power meter power meter or we can say here voltage standing wave ratio meter both are same both vswr and power can be measured from the same device that's why you can call it as a power meter or you can also call it as vswr meter okay so this is the way how you are going to measure the low VSWR measurement. 
Now coming to high VSWR measurement. So high VSWR which is S greater than 10. Which is S greater than 10. Now see here in the measurement of high VSWR whose value is greater than 10 can be measured by the method called double minima method. So this yes, this VSWR can be measured by the process called by the process called what is that by the process called double minima method double minima method see here we can call that method as double minima method or double maxima method so i told you the signal will be reflected back see this is let us consider this is the standing wave we are having okay this is the standing wave for this standing wave this is the minimum value v minimum again v minimum after lambda by 2 distance it is the lambda by 2 distance uh, we will be having one more v minimum after that again one more v minimum again one more v minimum see this is the v max position and again v max and again v max here also the distance between this max and max to max is lambda by 2 max to min is lambda by 4 okay now what we need to do the needle which uh, goes and touches this particular uh, signal at v min again we need to rotate until we find another v min okay so we in forward direction one time and in backward direction one time we need to rotate and at a distance uh, until we go for the distance of uh, see this is one distance let us consider this is another distance okay this is a d1 and this is d2 one is suppose if you have taken this v min as a reference point and until this uh, v min by root 2 value until this v min by root 2 value we can call this uh, uh, what is this uh, point as half power point here also it is some half power point which is i mean in my root 2 okay until you got this value you have to rotate this slaughter section carriage again here also slaughter section carriage movement is there so if the, until d1 you are moving in the forward direction till d2 you are moving in the reverse direction so these are the two distances you need to measure through which you can calculate the vswr meter reading with a formula vswr is equal to lambda g by pi d2 minus d1 pi into d2 minus d1 this is the formula of the voltage standing wave ratio with which we can calculate the vswr see d1 d2 are the measurements that are coming from this diagram see more elaborately we can see here vm or v min by root 2 this is the v min by root 2 value so initially we are here our needle touches this point and now we are going one time in the forward direction one time in the reverse direction keeping that point v min as the reference or we can say it is the center point now in the forward direction up to we have to go until we get v min by root 2 value or of power point again we will be having v min by one more root 2 value okay these are the two half power points or we can say it is double minima method so as i said vc is equal to what is that vc uh, what is that sorry s is equal to vswr s is equal to lambda g by pi into d2 minus d1 d2 minus d1 d1 d2 are the distances at successive uh, minimas are successive maximas. What do you mean by lambda g? Lambda g is nothing but guide wavelength. Where lambda g is nothing but guide wavelength, which is two times than the uh, two times into a breadth of the uh, waveguide. Okay, suppose if you are having a waveguide like this. Okay. So, you will be having this distance from here to here it is A. 
so that is the lambda g is equal to 2 ea here we are going to consider only uh, dominant mode dominant mode which is te10 mode okay so te10 mode is the dominant mode that mode for that mode lambda uh, sorry it is lambda c it is lambda c cut off wavelength lambda c is equal to 2 times a 2 times a nothing but breadth of the uh, wave guide okay and we know lambda naught is equal to c by f operating frequency will be given so that uh, lambda naught is equal to c by f once these two are uh, obtained it is very easy to calculate lambda g through which uh, through the formula lambda naught by 1 minus lambda naught by lambda c whole square under root okay so using this 2a we can calculate lambda c using this c by f we can calculate lambda naught and thereby we can calculate lambda g once the lambda g is cleared then we can go for this calculation of vswr so from equation number one from equation number one we can substitute these values we can get we can get voltage standing wave ratio okay this is the way how to measure the um, high vswr using successive minima or double minima method okay thank you